My question is around twin flames and love and a spiritual aspect because it's in the news a lot right now. It's on Netflix. There's a lot of negativity around it. But within regards to source and love, is well, what's the negativity around the twin flames? Well, that actually actually wasn't a negative around the twin flames. It was a negative around these two people that were treating it as a cult, basically. So obviously, that's not the energy that I am seeking. Well, here's the thing: all of you are extensions of source energy, and all of you are source energy while you're in your physical body. And that's the twinning that we would be focusing on. In other words, that's what you're wanting to calibrate to. And then whatever it is that you're calibrated to, the law of attraction is matching you up with whatever it is. People make so much, and we love you so much, but lazy people make so much of soulmates or twin flames because they just want to find the one so that they can be an observer of this condition so that they can live conditional love because it's easier. And that's what that observation thing is that we've been kind of playing with all day here today where when you realize that the law of attraction is bringing you whatever you're offering vibrationally and then you start getting the hang good at offering a vibration intentionally so that you are so often connected with who you really are not just who you were before you came into this body but who you've become in that vortex version ever since you are also much more connected with each other do you know prepare yourself the people who irk you the most are your soulmates. But you forgot that what you said is we'll go and we won't be identical because we don't want to promote conditional love. We want to promote love. We want to promote love. We want to promote allowance. We want to promote freedom. We don't want to promote you have to be just this way or love won't come to you from me you didn't come to promote I'm going to pinch myself off from all of the resources of wonderfulness and love and goodness unless you behave not one of you said anything like that instead you said let's go and let's be different enough that we inspire more and let's not nitpick if you're different than what I choose good on you and we know there are extreme situations that make that particularly uncomfortable to hear sometimes than others but you don't have a way of getting anybody to behave we've been playing with you for a while for a good reason so here I am and I've lived enough life to pretty much know what I like what I like to eat, where I like to go, who I like to be with, how I like it to go. I know mostly what I like. So I'm making this big portable billboard, put it online, that's the most efficient way, or carry it around, a great big thing, and put your picture prominently on it with big words right at the top that nobody can miss it. Say, see me, this is who I am, and when you meet up with me, these are what I need from you. And then just make those lists. Well. That's really ridiculous, isn't it? That's ridiculous. But people really think they would like that. Therapists tell us to do that. <laughs> There's non-negotiables and requirement lists and all sorts of lists. It's just, it's confusing, which is why which I want to ask you. Which is why making a lot of fun of it. Because <laughs> how ridiculous is that? My happiness depends on you all reading my list and complying. Really? That defies the laws of the universe in every possible way. That doesn't let you be the freedom seekers that you came to be. That doesn't mean that you are 100% worthy. It only means that some of you are worthy and you spend your lifetimes killing each other to try to sort out the ones that were worthy and the ones that weren't worthy. Remember the witch days Esther does when they drowned you. And if you didn't drown, you were a witch. And the only way you could prove you weren't a witch was to really drown. Mm -hmm. Or be set on fire. Yeah, those were hard times, weren't they? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I just, I just want to share love. I just want to be then love. Then why are you talking about this? How did it get hold of you? How old am I? 
No. Oh, no. Okay, sorry. The question would never allow us to ask anyone that. <laughs> then please repeat your question. How did you get hold of what it is you're wanting to talk about here? I'm, I got divorced a year ago. And we don't want the long story. No, I'm giving you the short one. All right. I'm giving you the cliff notes. All right. I got divorced last year. This has been a year of a spiritual rebirth for me, getting yeah. back to me. Yeah. And figuring out, like, that but, I'm not for everybody and I'm okay with that. But what's all that other stuff about? What's that about? Twin flames and all yeah, that what's sort that, of stuff. Because I'm just fascinated by the universe and how we could possibly be together like that maybe that there is that person for so put this in your definition of twin anything vibrational matches and at the basis of the vibrational matches whether they're temporary or long-lasting is the law of attraction and at the basis of that is the focus the emitting of a vibration all of your mics are always on and the law of attraction is putting you together and we get how when you've lived life and you've come to a lot of desires and now you're in a place where you're sort of giving up the struggle you're newly divorced you're newly feeling new freedom and that in that feeling of new freedom that as you attract whatever it is that comes to you we get how you would say well this is like my twin flame but the law of attraction insists that it be a twin flame now and a twin flame now and a twin flame of an idea engagement some of your memories are perfectly matched to what you want now some of them aren't most of them aren't some of the people in your now environment are perfectly matched to who you are and what you want most of them aren't, but some of them are. So this is the last question I have about it. It's all related to what, what you're saying. Um, so the creative power that we're seeing people, that people channel like artists, musicians, writers, whatever, that's, that's coming from the same source that you guys are pulling from. Einstein pulled from all these people, right? The, 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 the universe, correct? Yeah. Everything that everyone wants is in this vibrational reality. And all of it is possible. And if as humans you stop bickering over what should be allowed to be created and just mind your own business and create what you want, then you wouldn't deprive yourself of creating what you want by being mad about what that one's creating. And in what humans want to call a perfect world, everyone would get what they want. But we want to say it's already a perfect world because nobody can mess up your life. Nobody. Now we know. This is a particularly hard time to hear that because it feels like there's a whole lot of assertion going on. A whole lot of people walking into a whole lot of places and doing a whole lot of things to a whole lot of people. But it couldn't be happening if there were not a vibrational expectation. Jerry and Esther, some years ago, went to Buffalo, New York for a gathering like this. And Jerry liked to turn on the weather. It was before he had a smartphone and before anyone did. And he wanted to know what the weather was going to be so he always turned on the weather and usually there was a little bit of news with it and it was the local news in Buffalo and they were talking about the annual thing that they always did where the whole school they brought in the teachers and faculty they had towed in cars that had been in wrecks that were bloody and broken and they put them around the football stadium and all the students were assigned roles in this role-playing play that they would play for a week they picked up their envelope that told them what part they were going to play and you died in that crash and you died in that crash and you survived but you're crippled and even the parents were involved you're planning that funeral they really went all out because they wanted to make the tragedy of driving drunk really come home to these kids they wanted them to do what so many humans want they want you to face the horrible reality of this possible action and once you really know how bad that could be for you never do it again but what they weren't factoring in is that the law of attraction says just the opposite you scare someone out of their well-being that's their point of attraction and that's what's happening to so many people. So many people are being scared by so many people about their well-being. They're not walking around feeling free and safe. They're walking around feeling scared. So no one can say it's not part of their point of attraction. We're not saying they got it on purpose. And we're not saying that somebody else didn't influence it. You are all influencing whatever it is that you are offering. That's why you come as teachers. You come to align with wanted and show through the clarity of your example how to live what's wanted 
and when someone wants to know how you got that you can then explain it to them but it's a big world that wants you to choose a side you're either for us or against us they say about so many things and we say anybody who's against anything is depriving themselves of what they're for it's just the way that it works you want to be an advocate we want you to look into the world and see what's going on and we want you to briefly briefly and we mean briefly Esther we mean briefly we mean briefer than you're doing it Esther have your step one moment have your step one moment and know what you don't want and what you can't stand and what you cannot stand and what you cannot stand have your fit and have your moment of hate and despair about it but don't live in it have it and launch all those rockets of desire about children eating every night and children going to bed and feeling safe and about the world being a place that people want to live and launch all those rockets of desire and then as soon as you can give your undivided attention to the vortex version that hasn't manifested yet because everybody's so busy recreating what they don't want they're so busy looking at the horror of what's happening that it just pops up in another place and another place and another place and another place. They worry about guns, so they just get more guns. They worry about more people being crazy and misusing the guns, so more people get crazy and use the guns. It's all about the law of attraction. And you have power that you aren't exercising because you are observers of what is rather than advocates of what you've decided that you now prefer look forward into what's becoming and watch how the universe will deliver for you what you are asking for and don't wait for others don't chastise them when they don't get it don't be mad at them if they misunderstand don't push against anybody you just do your thing and we want you to know it doesn't take more than a room full of people about this size to look into that vortex of what is wanted today and to begin attracting because one is more powerful than millions who aren't to begin attracting what you're wanting that's what you wanted to extract from us for this group so you show yourself your power not with world events but you can help the Spurs win the <laughs> you can you can they're even teams they're evenly matched they're all there they've got their thing going on you can sit there and watch them and focus only upon what you want and influence an outcome you can you can just don't tell anybody because they'll lock you up but you can <laughs> you can do that what's left undone really we know that there isn't anything left undone right will you agree with that at least that there's nothing left undone if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next